They will live again in freedom in the garden of the Lord. They will walk behind the plowshare. They will put away the sword. The chains will be broken and all will have their reward. With these words, the famous musical Les Miserables concludes. The ending is filled with hope, but the pain and suffering is finally overcome forever. The death and destruction are finally at an end and that all people will live in freedom away from hardship and persecution at the hands of others. But the challenge of this ending is that it is an ideal. There is hope that long term such a world will become a reality, but it is just a hope. And as we know, pain and suffering remain in our world. The same ideal is presented to us in the words of the act of remembrance that we hear each year at this time. They shall not grow old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. When you go home, tell them of us and say for your tomorrows, we gave our today. Words that are more poignant than ever, a hundred and three years on from the start of the Great War. And again, the same ideal is presented to us in the Bible in Revelation 21 verse 4. God will wipe away the tears from all faces. There will be no more death, no more grief, no more crying and no more pain. The old things have disappeared But if we look at our world at the present time, we have to conclude it is a hope and nothing more. Because we're no closer to achieving that view of the world than we were 78 years ago, or even 103 years ago. We know that World War I and World War II were considered by the generations who lived through them to be the wars that ended the need for all wars, with so much pain, suffering, and atrocity committed on both sides. And we know, as we gather today to remember the countless lives lost in the cause of freedom, that we resolved as a world back then never to allow it to happen again. And yet, in 2017, we can probably count more than four or five wars that we've been involved in or are involved in at the moment, that have no imminent conclusion, simply demonstrating that pain and suffering go on. Did all those men and women in the World War I and World War II die for nothing? They believed they were fighting in order that a better future could be achieved. They were fighting that future generations would never have to bow and to scrape to the ideals of tyranny, and evil. And yet the future they hoped for has never materialised. It's all very well us in the Western world saying that the rest of the world's squabbles have nothing to do with us, that we have enough worries of our own to be getting on with, and the problems faced by people in other countries around the world are no concern of ours. That we should simply put our heads in the sand and just get on with the difficulties we're facing. But the challenge that we face in 2017 is that's not an option. Why, you may be asking yourself. The reason is very simple. It's because of the globalised nature of our world. What affects one group of people affects us all. And we should never abandon our responsibility to them. Remember the greatest commandment. Love God with your whole mind, heart, soul and strength. But also love your neighbour as you love yourself. If we've learnt anything, it's that in 2017, the globalised nature of our world means that we must have a duty to love our neighbour as we love ourselves. The Great War transformed the way in which people interacted with the world. 
Up until that point, the problem of war was settled on a far away battlefield that affected only the lives of those soldiers caught up in it. And the reality of the pain and the misery and the death was only felt in whether victory was achieved or not. With the Great War, though, the stark reality of pain and death was felt not only by those soldiers, not only by those individuals who were called up, but by their families, by communities and by nations as a whole. No one could escape the reality. And as a result, the sanctity of life changed beyond recognition to a place where people believed that hope of a better future could indeed become a reality. And it is this hope that means we cannot abandon our responsibility to those caught up in war now. Is hope an ideal? We as Christians live with a bit of a paradox in our faith and belief. We believe that pain and suffering have been conquered in the death and resurrection of Christ. We believe that Jesus' life and ministry are transformative and that through Jesus' teaching, we can make a difference to the world in which we're set. And when we look at the stories of Jesus in the Gospels, this is happening all the time. Jesus rejects the lifestyles of the ruling classes. He pronounces freedom to those who are perceived to have none. He pronounces freedom to those who are oppressed and marginalised. And he restores everyone into the presence, the loving presence of God. We know from the reading of the gospel stories that thousands flocked to that message. And because of the hope and ideal he expressed, the Christian message has stood the test of time for over 2,000 years. But it remains only a hope and an ideal if we don't become passionate about it and allow it to do the very thing that we say it does. Christianity is often criticised for not speaking into the situations it finds itself in. And people reject it as being irrelevant because of that. People I've spoken to in the last nine years in ministry have suggested to me that they are comforted by the Christian message. They feel a genuine sense of warmth and faith personally. But they also suggest to me that it hasn't changed the world and it won't change the world. The Christian message, they say, is warm and fluffy but it is just an ideal. What's so disturbing about this is that in Jesus' day, his message was revolutionary. It shook communities to the core. It challenged people to think differently about their lives. And it made people who felt comfortable to be decidedly uncomfortable. This to me suggests that the message of the gospel wouldn't have been seen as warm and fluffy and just an ideal if we really allowed its message to shake our lives and the lives of members of our community out of our complacency. And maybe Remembrance Sunday is a good time to start as it speaks of an ideal that we all aspire to. When I was young, Remembrance Sunday was all, always seen to me to be a bit of a time of dread. I was a member of the Boys Brigade and Remembrance Sunday was always a parade Sunday. But I always remember that it was cold and wet. And I never really was in a happy place when I was on that parade. Also, I never really felt it meant anything to me personally at all. It was just something that I had to do. But that's not how I feel today. I know now what it's about. And I believe it is our duty and our service to those who died not to forget them and to live in hope 
that the ideal we dream of can and will become a reality. If we believe this is possible, then the tomorrow that was promised to us in the sacrifices of the men and women in the two world wars will have been truly worth it. But we can only trust and have confidence that the ideal does indeed become a reality in our midst. They will live again in freedom in the garden of the Lord. They will put away the sword, the chains will be broken and all will have their reward. Is this an ideal or something that we can strive for as Christians today? Amen.